Interestingly, when you get involved in the arena of virtues, values, morals, character, people tend to think you don't need research. It's obvious. If I talk about honesty, people will be more honest and they'll value it more. Or if I do some other strategy, it will have an impact. And in fact, some of the things that work are not necessarily things people think of first when they want to figure out how to design their own character education program or intervention. And some of the things that people intuit as being highly effective really don't have a whole lot of evidence to back them up. One of the challenges of evaluating character education, virtues education, is that there are a lot of choice points in a very complex set of alternatives. And so you really need to sit and think a bit about this. So one way I like to think about it is to break it into three groups. Evaluation can be about process or implementation. Evaluation can be about uh, mediating variables, most predominantly school climate. And evaluation should be about the outcomes, the impact. So let me talk about each of those separately. When one is doing character education, there's a tendency to assume that if it's been mandated, perhaps even if it's been trained through some kind of professional development, that all implementers, for instance, all classroom teachers, are doing it, are doing it completely, are doing it well, high quality. And that's rarely the case. So it's really important to know what is in fact being implemented. Quite some time ago, there was a large um, school district initiative in the United States. So they went in and they asked the district administrators and then they asked the individual school administrators, um, how is this program going? And they were glowing about it. They said, it's great, we love it, we're gonna keep it going, we're committed to it. And then they went and asked the classroom teachers who were the ones who were actually implementing it. It was a classroom level program. And they said, oh, that, you know, we're not really doing it. It was pretty stupid. We didn't like it. So in essence, the administrators thought it was going great. And in fact, it wasn't even going. It wasn't being done. How will you know if all the parts of it are being done, if they're all being done completely, and if they're all being done correctly and effectively? It really takes a planned assessment. Sometimes it's teachers logging in their lessons. Sometimes it's collecting lesson plans. Sometimes it's doing observations and walkthroughs. There could be all sorts of ways of doing this. Then the second part of evaluation, as I said, are the mediating variables, and I'm gonna focus on school climate. Because there was a great research study done by what was then the Developmental Studies Center on their child development project. And one of the things they learned from this massive, well-designed study was that the implementation of the program led to changes in children's experiences of the climate of the school, which then led to development of character and other changes in students. And without that piece in the middle, students coming to experience the school more and more as a caring school climate, then the effects never happen. You can implement, but if the students don't come to change their experience of the culture, their development doesn't happen. But lastly, the rubber hits the road where we get to, is our initiative actually making changes in students, particularly the changes that we intend it to do? And there it gets a little tricky. What most schools do, through my experience, is use surrogate data that they already have on hand. If your school has a clear set of outcome goals, a list of words, a list of virtues, a list of values, character strengths, then that should be what your program's built around, and that should be what you're trying to measure at the outset. But there are many ways to do this, through surveys, through observations of behavior, through self-reports, through student essays, but they should be targeted to what you're targeting. One interesting thought experiment that I do all the time is to ask people, think of a character strength of your own, and you can do that too, and then think about why did you become that kind of person? Why are you particularly honest or caring, fair, respectful? And I've done this all over the world, and I get the same answers all the time. The first most powerful answer is one or both of my parents had that characteristic, and then I became it because they were models for me. And the next one is that some other adult in my life, a 
teacher, a coach, had that characteristic. And that's what nurtured it in me. And then sometimes people will tell me the opposite of that, which is some person, one of my parents or somebody else very close to me, really had some negative character aspect. And I vowed I would never end up like that person. They were abusive, they were racist, they were criminals, they were dishonest, whatever it was. And then some people talk about life trauma that I unfortunately had to deal with some kind of life trauma, a loss in my life or something like that, a health challenge. And it brought out character strengths in me I didn't know were there. Or it led me to develop a character strength I needed that I didn't have before. And yet nobody has ever told me that their character strengths came from a poster on a wall or a quote was read to them by an educator or a lesson or a curriculum. Yet we frequently go to these things. We need to figure out what are the pedagogical strategies that actually are effective in helping nurture the flourishing of human goodness in people and to choose the right path.